the Spirit of God is with you and also with you. Welcome to this virtual gathering of Washington Avenue Christian Church. My name is Nathan Russell, and my pronouns are he and him, and I serve this congregation as its senior pastor. Thank you for inviting and welcoming us into your various viewing locations for The Alternative, an online gathering to reconnect with God and with one another. You are welcome and wanted here and wherever you may be, just however you are. This gathering is an alternative from the myriad things that grab our attention and time and an opportunity to reconnect, rejoin, and remember. Together we will sing, hear, pray, share, and commune. The lyrics of the hymns will appear on your screen, and we hope you will do whatever helps you create meaning and connect with the divine. May you sense God's presence in new ways, alternative ways, ways that are life-giving, loving, and liberating. We are in the season of Easter, a time for celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so our curtains are white. And though we've been using the artwork behind me since Advent, I cannot help but look at it anew in this Easter season and see something of the resurrection contained therein. The candles are already glowing by God's divine spark. And now we ring this chime. To clear the air, because our worship of God is about to begin. As we prepare to lift our hearts, will you join me in a query? A query is an ancient practice of asking a question. You can engage this question by yourself or with a viewing partner in the live chat that's off to the side or with me on Twitter using our church's handle at W-A-C-C-E-L-Y-R-I-A. The question is this, how do we experience shadows?
joyful is the dark, holy hidden God. Rolling cloud of night be on one day. Majesty in darkness, energy of love, Lord, in flesh the mystery proclaim. Joyful is the dark, joyful is the dark, joyful is the dark. Joyful is the dark spirit of the deep, we need not the overwhelming nation. Silk and sheen of midnight, plumage black and Joyful is the dark coolness of the tomb, waiting for the wonder of the morn. Never was that midnight touched by dread and gloom. Darkness was the cradle of the dawn. Joyful is the dark. Joyful. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verses 12 through 16. Listen for the word of God stirring within and beyond these words of Scripture. Now, many signs and wonders were done among the people through the apostles. They were all together in the portico of Solomon. None of the others dared to join them, but the people extolled them. Yet more believers were added to Christ, a multitude of people, so much so that they even carried the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats so that Peter's shadow might overshadow some of them as he passed. Multitudes would also gather from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all made well. For the promise and covenant of the very best, most beautiful gospel good news, we say together, thanks be to God. Stephen Colbert is by far my favorite late night TV show host. I think he is wickedly funny, and his opening monologue always has a way of adding a hint of humor about subjects that are not often funny at all. A spoonful of sugar, or humor, helps the medicine, the truth, go down, I guess. In addition to his humor, Colbert is a person of deep and abiding faith. He's a practicing Catholic and has served in leadership in his local parish. A few months ago, he spoke about both his faith 
about both his faith and humor in the most vulnerable and authentic of ways. In so doing, he cast a shadow. He threw some shade, a good shadow, that enveloped his guest and somehow lengthened to cover his audience both in person and on TV. Before Stephen Colbert followed David Letterman on CBS, Stephen hosted a show on Comedy Central called The Colbert Rapport, on which Colbert played an alter ego of himself. He was the devil's advocate in the worst and yet most humorous of ways. However, my most favorite performance Stephen Colbert has given was when he was the comedian for the White House Correspondents' Dinner in 2006. Now, 16 years ago, which is hard to believe. He threw shade with such skill, his hearers did not immediately pick up on what he was saying. His words didn't click at first, but he dished it out and he didn't hold back. Colbert is a comedian, he's not a journalist, he's not a fact checker. And I expect comedians to poke and prod in ways that may make us feel uncomfortable, even as they make us laugh. Still, Stephen Colbert has me thinking about the ways in which we cast a shadow, or how we throw shade, so to speak. When we started with Year W, a women's lectionary for the whole church, on the first Sunday of Advent in 2021, our gospel reading was from Luke, the same author as Acts. Luke narrated the angel's visit to Mary to announce that she would be the mother of God incarnate. Naturally, Mary had a question. She asked, how can this be? The angel responded to Mary saying, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. I could not get past that word overshadow. It troubled me. It sounded violent. I even said in that sermon that I don't want to be overshadowed or eclipsed by anyone. Because for Mary, this divine conception involves some form of sexual intimacy in which a child is conceived, all my red flags went way up. I tweeted to the Reverend Dr. Will Gaffney, creator of the Year W Lectionary, how troubled I was by this word overshadowed. And she replied to me saying, I'm not troubled at all by this. I wanted to respond to her saying, how can you not be troubled? Instead, I took her rejoinder tweet as an invitation to look again at that word and explore its use. The author of Luke and Acts uses this word three times. The first is the instance I just described. The second is at Jesus' transfiguration. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up to the mountain to pray. And while Jesus was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes, his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. And suddenly the disciples saw two men, Moses and Elijah, how they recognized them, I don't know, but they were talking to Jesus. It was as epic as it could get for those disciples. But just as Moses and Elijah were leaving Jesus, Peter said to Jesus, Oh, it is so good for us to be here. Let's set up three tents, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. But Peter did not know what he was saying. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them. And they were terrified as they entered the cloud. But from that cloud, the voice of God spoke, saying, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. The cloud that overshadowed them wasn't meant for their harm, but their protection. Also, that cloud was reminiscent of the cloud that led the Hebrew people on their exodus journey. A cloud throws shade It provides a shadow, a reprieve from direct sunlight and harmful UV rays. 
The final, the third instance of the use of the verb overshadows occurs in the book of Acts. The author says that the people carried the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats so that Peter's shadow might overshadow some of them as he passed. Multitudes would also gather from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all made well. So imagine that for a second. Peter is throwing shade. He's casting a shadow that has the potential to heal. This third use of overshadow is significant because the previous two uses describe God as the one who overshadows. But now Peter, the human, the loudmouthed disciple who leaps before he looks and speaks before he thinks, and the one who denied Jesus three times, he overshadows And Peter's shadow alone has the power to make people well, to make them whole. So think about that for a minute, maybe more. As I said earlier, Luke and Acts are written by the same person. They are remarkably similar and even parallel in places. For example, in Luke 1, Mary asks the angel, how can this be? And the angel responds, the Holy Spirit, she will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. In Acts chapter 1, the disciples ask Jesus, is this the time when you will restore sovereignty to Israel? And Jesus answers them, It's not for you to know the times or the seasons that God has set through divine authority, but you all will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. So that's quite the parallelism. But, but what I haven't noticed until working on this sermon is that the same power that overshadows Mary is the same power that overshadows the disciples. And it's the same power now given to all disciples of Christ. Now Peter can throw shade. He can cast a shadow and do the work of God in the world. So you can probably guess now where I'm going with this idea. What is the shadow that we cast? How do we throw shade as a church? Does our shadow threaten people? keeping them hidden and oppressed? Or does our shadow lengthen to welcome the whole wide world into the future God wants and ultimately will have. The world needs a church that can throw some shade, and I think we're just the church to do it. Make no mistake, just like the disciples long ago, we too have received power to be Christ's witnesses from our doorsteps to the ends of the earth. So, given that, Here are some of the ways I think we can throw some shade. We can claim without hesitation or reservation that God's love is for the whole wide world. No exceptions, period. That love is not value-free, as in God loves us, therefore we can do whatever we want. God's love, it doesn't work like that. Instead, we can be agents to God's inclusive love and throw shade, indeed, a shadow of protection on those, upon those who are oppressed, minoritized, and disenfranchised. To make this even more explicit, when a state legislature proposes and even passes a bill that threatens God's lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, asexual, plus children, we can throw some shade of protection upon them. Even as we withhold shadow on unjust laws, 
so that the hate and misunderstanding that fuels them can be brought into the full light of God. Second, our nation and indeed our world, we are grieving for mass shootings in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Buffalo, New York, and Laguna Woods in California. We know that the violent crimes in both Buffalo and Laguna Woods were targeted acts of hatred. Again, the world needs a church that can throw some shade, cast a shadow of protection upon those who are targeted because of who they are, who God created them to be, even as we withhold shadow from such racist ideas as white replacement theory. Such ideologies and the people that espouse them need to feel the heat of the sun that shines and burns so bright. Residents of the city of Illyria and Lorain County need some shade too. We have food deserts here, and we have inadequate public transportation, and we are economically depressed and repressed. We can have a witness here too and throw some shade. Yes, we can and we must be charitable of heart and mind and throw shade that offers assistance. And we must question why such systems and structures remain in place that keep people impoverished. We throw shade in order to protect and heal, and we withhold it too so that systems and structures that are unjust may be exposed to the light of God and therefore be transformed. These are just some examples of the work of God in the world. And by God's Spirit, we have the power to do it to throw some shade, to cast a shadow, to overshadow in good ways those who are suffering and welcome them into the reign of God that is taking place here and now from our doorsteps to the ends of the earth. Thanks be to God. Amen.
left-hand side of your screen is a QR code. And with a smartphone or smart device, you can scan this code. And with the website that opens, you can do three different things. First, register your attendance. Second, submit a prayer request. And third, give online. This QR code is an ongoing experiment for us. And when you use it to register your attendance, you can tell us how you are creating meaning and deepening your faith, which we are always so very glad to hear. If you're not sure about using a QR code, don't worry. There are links in the below video description that do the very same thing. Now we turn to our prayer of the people, which is an alternative to the ways in which we normally pray. This prayer is not passive, but active. This is a body prayer, one that will engage our full selves. And I invite you to participate in ways that are helpful and create meaning for you. So for our first move, will you lift up one hand as if to block the sun? And let us pray. God of sunlight and shadow, we confess that we don't always like shade. Usually we prefer the light and shy away from the dark. We fear the valley of the shadow of death, for example. Forgive us for when we have not understood shadows to be gifts of protection from you. We also have not been aware of the shadows we cast, the shade that we throw. However, your Spirit has given us power to throw shade in ways that heal, restore, and reconcile. That's a tremendous responsibility, but we cannot deny that such is the task to which you have called us. Keep us aware of the shadows we cast and help us to welcome all who seek healing into the shade of your love and grace. For our second move, will you lower your hand and just let the sun shine in? And let us continue our prayer. Shadows offer protection, and sometimes we want to keep things hidden in shadows, instead of bring them out into the light to reveal them. And yet you promise in Scripture that all things will be brought to the light. As your church, your witnesses on earth, help us to shine your light on things that need to be exposed. And here's the tricky part. We know that we need to let the light shine on ourselves too so that we may see how the power of sin can still lurk within our hearts and minds. Grant us your light, a power that sears and can burn, not so much to consume, but to reprove and refine. Help us be the church that can both reflect your light and throw shade in ways that testify to the future you want and ultimately will have. For our final move, will you bring your hands toward your heart in a posture of devotion, and let us continue our prayer, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we come to this sacred meal. Here we are invited to dine with Jesus. And, you know, Jesus, he cast a shadow too. A shadow of protection. A shadow that lengthens as long as this table is. And it's enough of a shadow to cover you and me and the whole wide world. On the night Jesus met with with his disciples in an upper room, he first washed his hands, and then looking upon the table, he found gifts of both grain and grape. And taking the bread, he blessed it and broke it 
and said, this is my body given for you. Take, eat, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and after giving thanks for it, said, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood. Drink of it, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. For as long as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we throw some shade and witness to the future God wants and ultimately will have. Come, beloved, you are welcome and wanted here, and everything is ready. Go into the world, beloved, and make a plain declaration and a public demonstration of the very best, most beautiful gospel good news of Jesus Christ. Embody this gospel that is alternative to the ways of the world because the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. Remember that you are never, ever very far from God's heart. And finally, finally, trust with everything you've got and all that you are. That the future God wants and ultimately will have is here and now, even as it is still on its way. Amen.